Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in for another episode. Over the last couple of years, I have really gotten head over heels into the glide bait world. I've got a lot of glide baits I spent way too much money on, and I've got a lot of mass produced glide baits that you could buy for 10 or 15 bucks. And honestly, some of the ones that are super expensive don't perform that well. Some of the ones that are super cheap are some of my best performers. So from a price standpoint, it's hard necessarily to point to the ones that are more expensive and just say, hey, these are better because they're more expensive. I really feel like glide baits are one of the most uh, critical techniques that we have where you should rely on the input from other users of glide baits. And what I mean by that is a lot of glide baits out there just don't perform well or don't draw the attention of the fish. Some glide baits, on the other hand, just seem like they outperform other ones, and you can't even tell a difference. They all look roughly the same in the water, but there's something to them that the fish really get into. And having said that, that's why I like to rely on a lot of the input from other individuals I know that fish glide baits. You know, when a, when a glide bait could potentially cost you 100 bucks, it's not like you're going out buying a pile of them. You might buy one somebody else might buy a different brand and you compare them and what you find is one of them generally works better. So I really like to rely on input from other individuals using some of the baits. So I wanted to do just a simple video to talk about some of my favorite smaller glide baits. So I'm talking about glide baits that are in like that five to six inch range. Uh, they tend to be baits that are easier to use in terms of catching fish like they're smaller you tend to get more bites on them you may not get the same number of giant bites that you'd get say on an eight inch glide bait but you tend to have more action on them now i will tell you i find that the smaller ones a lot of times don't run as good as the bigger ones it seems like the bigger they get in size the better the balance of the baits are and they tend to run better <clears throat> with the smaller ones, a lot of times you'll find that they get hung up on the hooks or you can easily overwork them. Too big of a, of a rod movement, the bait will just completely blow out or the bait will hook itself. It, there's a, there, I feel like the smaller ones tend to be tougher to use, even though they do generally, for me, catch more fish. So I wanted to walk you through five of my favorite ones. They're kind of, some are custom, some are mass produced, <clears throat> and they're all over the gamut in terms of price. I mean, none of them are, I guess, super, super expensive, but they're very high quality baits as well and ones that I've been big fans of. <clears throat> so let's start with the first one here. This is the Savage 3D Glide Swimmer. This is the 135 size. So this bait, I wanna say it retails for like, I think it's around 15 bucks, not, not very expensive at all. Uh, <clears throat> this is one that, Honestly, doesn't look all that crazy good to me, but it tends to run very, very well. And there's something about this bait that gets the fish's attention and gets them to bite. Now, in this case, this is one of my favorite colors. It's got the chartreuse on both the top and the bottom, but it's a bait that really tends to uh, run very easily. Now, for a a smaller size bait like this, this is one that you can easily blow out if you're imparting too much action with it. But this bait tends to run very, very well for a smaller bait. Now, to me, this bait is one of my favorite when I'm fishing clear waters of body, clear bodies of water that have both smallmouth and or spotted bass. Uh, a lot of it has to do with that chartreuse color, but there is something about it. You know, for me, <clears throat> if you're fishing around lakes that have blueback herring, or Alewife, or Cisco, that bait profile matches really, really well. Now, the one thing I'll say that I don't like about this bait is the hard tail on it. I tend to like to have tails that are more natural and lifelike for a couple of reasons. One is I think they look better, but two, I think it, I think the hard tail can impede your hookup percentage at some point, because if the fish comes from the side and hits that hard tail, it pushes the bait versus a soft tail folding over. That's one negative. But having said that, I'm pretty sure that this harder tail is what allows that bait to run so easily uh, without blowing out. So this guy right here, the Savage, is the 3D Glide Swimmer 135 size. <clears throat> All right, let's go with this guy. 
So this guy right here is a six inch Biggs. This bait is one that's got a pretty hardcore following, uh, very, very natural, very good uh, glide bait. This is one that I've caught some really good fish on this year. It has a very good natural lifelike kind of that paintbrush tail. But the coolest thing about it is the, the belly, how narrow it is. Uh, this is the narrowest glide bait I know of from like the belly side. So what I love about that is it one, it makes it a, an easy bait to work. It, it it gives it a bunch of additional action, but I also feel like that does a really good job of matching the hatch. Meaning if you had a six inch uh, shad, <clears throat> their belly region isn't going to be real wide. It's very, very narrow like that. So I think there's something about that narrowness that does a good job at matching the hatch. But these Biggs baits are uh, really good. They're not super expensive from a custom standpoint. I think they retail for about 60 bucks on the website. And I'll put links uh, to Tackle Warehouse if they carry them, or in this case, you know, to their website or to their Instagram page, something like that. But <clears throat> check out this guy. This is one that's got a really good following amongst a lot of tournament fishermen. Next up, we'll talk about another custom. This is one, I talk about the Legrades. Uh, this is a shortcake. He makes the donuts and the fritters and a bunch of different size. These are some of my absolute favorite ones. This guy measures, what does he measure? I mean, from the body of it measures about four and a quarter inches. So with the tail, you're probably looking at about five and a quarter inches. The cool thing with the Legrades, I don't know what the material is. It's some sort of resin. The sound that these make are unlike anything else. So when you're, when you're retrieving this, you get some really good sound out of it that has some great fish catching attention. The paint schemes, as you can see, are amazing. This is like a crappie colored one. And, and the tail on them, it's a little bit harder of a rubber, but it definitely gives the bait a good natural action coming through the water. These things run phenomenally well. They look amazing in the water and they generate a lot of strikes. So check out the Legrady. This is the shortcake, the donuts a little bit bigger. They keep getting bigger in size. They're all kind of your, your donut uh, style names. The fritter, the uh, donut, the shortcake. Those are just some of my favorites. I've been using them for a long time now and having a lot of really good success. All right, so one that came out this year is the Berkeley Nessie. This is a seven incher, so it is a little longer than the others, but the thing is, it's all plastic. So it's very, very pliable. It does not have the feel of a bigger glide bait because of how soft it is. Uh, just, uh, I mean, the, this bait gets bites and is just one that runs very well. You can burn it at high speeds. For being a plastic bait, it's amazing how well they run. They're roughly like 10 bucks. They come in a bunch of different sizes, hold up great. They have a really good single hook harness, snaps into place. Uh, I've had a lot of luck with this. I've been fishing it now for the second half of this year. I expect to hear a lot more about this next year, but if you're looking for kind of a bait that's a good entry point from a price standpoint, runs well, gets a lot of bites, the Nessie is definitely one to be checking out. And then the last one we're gonna talk about this one I just pulled out of the box. This is a jointed claw 148. This is uh, a Gancraft bait that's been out for a long time. The bigger claws, the bigger jointed claws have a very diehard following, but the 148 is a really good size as well. Again, this one just tends to generate a lot of bites. It's one for me that I've had great luck on down in Florida. I've had great luck in the Great Lakes uh, for big smallmouth. It's just one that just gets Bit. Again, it's got a very, very loyal following. These things are uh, for mass produced bait. They're I, I maybe more on the high end, I guess. I think they retail for like 45 bucks, uh, but they're really, really good running baits. They're fine tuned. Now, the one thing I will say with these, this kind of goes along with what I was saying before about the smaller models compared to the bigger ones. The smaller one, can't you can overwork it very easily where it will kind of do too much of a 360, catch itself on the, have the hooks catch the line and therefore it blows the cast out, whereas the bigger ones don't do it quite as much. Uh, but again, I think that's almost more of just a function of how good the bait is in the water. You just have to be 
familiar with that, recognize that you don't want to overwork it. But this is one that tends, <clears throat> tends to get me some really good bites. I've had some really good tournament days with this guy as well. Um, but for me, you know, glide baits are one of those things. <clears throat> as much as I'd love to throw the big ones in tournaments, I generally don't unless it's a really specific circumstance. But having said that, I tend to throw these six inches quite a bit in tournaments. Now, I do generally have one on the deck that I'm not necessarily casting all day long, but I love to fish them. You know, if you get a single isolated piece of cover, maybe you've got a dock, uh, maybe you've got an isolated shallow brush pile. If there's a big fish in those areas, these baits, even though they're smaller size, tend to still generate bigger than average bites. So from a tournament standpoint, I definitely will use them. I just don't like to go with the real big ones because I feel like it, I feel like you see some really big fish, but the commitment factor is not nearly as good. But I would give these a try. If you're if you're thinking about getting into glide bait fishing or you want to fish some smaller ones that are going to generate some more bites, all of these are ones that for me have done very, very well. Um, and I've tried a bunch of them, guys, but these are the ones I tend to throw if I'm looking to really have a, a good day or I'm fishing in a tournament situation. Anyways, uh, let me know in the comments section, what are some of the other smaller glide baits, you know, in that six inch range that you're throwing? Uh, I've, I've messed around. I do have some like uh, smaller depths slide swimmers that are good baits as well. Um, so I'd love to know from you guys. You know, because I know that's one that people are going to mention, and I probably could have mentioned that. I'd have to dig one out, but uh, let me know in the comments section. I want to know which ones you guys are throwing as well. Have you thrown some of these? Do you think they're functioning well uh, so that others can learn from you as well? If you enjoyed today's video, hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Stay tuned. New video coming out tomorrow.